Well, through the Convention on Biodiversity, uh, we aim to try and significantly reduce the rate of biodiversity loss by 2010. And last year was the International Year of Biodiversity, so it was a big international effort to try and promote biodiversity conservation to reduce biodiversity loss. And the goal from 2002 to 2010 was to significantly reduce the rate of biodiversity loss. And pretty much everywhere in the world, we failed to do that. So we've identified uh, about 20 different habitat types in the UK, and there's about uh, 200 different species where there are specific actions to conserve these different species. And the government was interested to find out how much people are willing to pay for those species. And within the valuation framework, what you have to do is look at different scenarios. So rather than to a Costanza valuing nature in UK, what we're trying to do is look at the value of that policy instrument. And we had two scenarios of so the value of the current biodiversity action plan. So what are the current benefits we're obtaining from the current policy compared to a counterfactual where if the government stopped funding biodiversity policy and biodiversity declined. So I was looking at what's the benefit from what's happening. And secondly, what would be extra benefits if the biodiversity action plan was fully implemented to achieve all the targets. So currently, we're not quite meeting all the targets and they could spend more money to achieve those benefits. Currently, the most important service is climate regulation and water regulation. So these are the types of services that the policy deliver that are most important to people in the UK. And simply we look at the full implementation, the extra benefits, again, we see that uh, those are important as well as charismatic species. Whereas things like wild food and non-food products, people don't really care about it, which is kind of to be expected to a large extent. So you can see what services different uh, people value. And finally, we can look at how different habitats have different values. Uh, so things like blanket bogs, which store carbon and regulate water on a per hectare basis, they deliver a high blue lines are the current services and red is the enhanced services. So blanket bogs, uh, purple moorland grass, which is like heather, uh, coastal floodplains and native woodlands are the habitat types that deliver most services per hectare. And we can get that information. And I could split this up almost into different ecosystem services. But I think if you disaggregate a the data that much, you start inducing lots of errors. So I think what we've demonstrated in this research is that different habitats are important to deliver different services. And through the conservation policies, it we're actually getting value for money for delivery of those services. Oh, so, um, you've seen that again. So I think the time's up. So just to summarize today, generally speaking, economic markets have failed to deliver environmental goods. There's no market price for them. And so, but people still gain benefits from it. And what we as environmental economists have had to think about novel ways in which we can capture those values, either through revealed preference techniques, travel costs, or stated preference, choice experiments.